what I think I want to put to you is the argument that you talk about class may have relevance, but it's kind of used by people who suddenly discovered whether they're Marxist or not, I seriously doubt. But it's now suddenly used as an excuse for not dealing head on with structural racism. And the fact is, do you accept that it would be impossible within 22 years to rid a country of 300 years, at least 300 years, of racism which is embedded in the society? Oh, well, I agree. I think that racism in all forms should be condemned. Yes, but I'm asking um, you, there's a structural component yes. to this. You talk about 400,000 white people who, who are on the borderline, and, 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 and frankly, I don't, want to, I don't want to disparage that at all. That's distressing. But they're 24% unemployed in the country, probably more. The vast majority of those are black people. The, the fact is, if you look at all the statistics, whites are overrepresented in everything. And, and, and more than that, the argument is that much of our education system is structured around a Eurocentric conception uh, or vision right, as to we've got to be little good people from Oxford or Cambridge. Do you accept that our society needs to grapple with those challenges and that therefore there is some obligation upon white people, considerable obligation, to kind of make the move in order that we can get somewhere along this path? Well, I think there should, well, as I said, there must firstly be mutual respect, but there's other factors like the school systems in South Africa yeah. um, that is disadvantaging, disadvantaging um, black students, right. and they do not get um, the um, right education, they do not receive their books, so that is something that government must work on. So I think a lot of um, problems um, actually lies with the government. You know, in the light of what has been said here, to what extent do where do white people fit into this? You know, Judge, I must uh, disagree. You, you said earlier, you know, about white people doing something, and I disagree with that totally. I think what needs to happen is that white people need to take a step back. Can I ask you what you mean by a step back? I'm just, I think it's an important point. I think there's always been a conflation of what that means to take a step back from privilege. Um, there's a very purist idea that it means I must give up my physical wealth and all of that. But that's very essentialist to think that's all it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about taking a step back. It's about understanding that the struggle is not about me. Um, even as an, as an Indian woman, I must also acknowledge um, that I was not as oppressed or my ancestors were not as oppressed um, as my sort of purely black counterparts. Mm -hmm. um, there's an understanding that we must recognize our identity, yes, um, but we must be able, and that's why I'm saying I have some more respect for white people who've been able to say, I am not proud of the fact that my white ancestors did this. And well, as a result, I will take a step back and allow the opportunities yes, and allow that's what that I'm talking to about. To I, I hear you. I think you and I are talking about a different term about step yeah. back. No, no, you shake your head, but yes. here's the point. I think the fact that it requires an acknowledgement is an important question, don't you think? An acknowledgement from who? I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to understand something from you especially. Um, are, are you expecting us to sit here and say, we thank the white people no. that, um, you know, were able to assist where they could in liberating no. black people, I even think the if question we were is, if The question is what project we're talking about. If we're talking a project that is non-racial and emphasizes humanity, uh, meaning people with a common view of the world irrespective of race, that's one vision. If your vision is actually white people can't be part of that, that's a different vision. And that's what I'm talking about. For me, not it's, that, it's not that I'm a, Not that I'm not at all suggesting that the people who were part of the struggle who were white, you know, people like Joe Slovak or would have wanted thanks. Not at all. That's not at all what I'm talking about. That's a misinterpretation of my question. My question really is, what sense you have as we move forward that there's a possibility of getting to a society where actually race is going to matter less. So less. There's, there's, there's two things you can't do, right, from my perspective. One, you can't police my reaction to your question I and agree. my understanding, right? And my understanding is from the question and the way you pose the question, mm -hmm. you're expecting some sort of, you know, a kumbaya moment between black people no, and white people to that. say, you know, your Joe Slobos did participate and because they participated, oh, shame, doch, man, not all white people are bad and all those things. And unfortunately, that's not how I see the world. How I see the world is how they've painted the world 
out for me. Mm. And that is something that I have to reject. I have to reject whiteness in, in all its forms, in all forms that it comes, structurally, institutionally, personally, politically, in any and every way. And for me to be liberated and for me to advance the black consciousness um, movement outside of, you know, the traditional black which is me and to invoke you know other blacks that Biko spoke about like your Indians and your coloreds I need to a large extent reject whiteness and to reject whiteness I can't just say white people must go sit in a corner while we deal with ourselves because them sitting in corners not going to do anything well the question I suppose we've got to probe is what whiteness is whether whiteness is a cultural uh, imposition or whether whiteness is simply a pigmentation question or whether it's both but I've got to take a break and then I'll ask you to reply to that when I get back for you, all white people are the same, no matter what they did or didn't do. Yes. Okay. No, sir, that's, clear. That's a very, no, no, I understand where you're coming from. They fought machine guns with dustbin lids and stones. Forty years later, their courage resonates. Instead of stones, young people today use hashtags. Once again, taking aim at the establishment. Will a just and quality education system be realized in their lifetime? Join ENCA for a series of in-depth reports and debates on what young people feel and think 40 years after that fateful day. Welcome back. I suppose when I interrupted you, I just want to, can you just describe, I mean, whiteness as you understand it. What do you mean? Whiteness in terms of, um, you know, pigmentation, mm -hmm. whiteness in terms of, you know, culture, whiteness in terms of uh, beliefs and principles, whiteness in its, enti it's an entirety. We, we can't isolate and say that um, whiteness is only specific to pigmentation and that culturally it's not, or that um, from a belief system or a principle system or a structural institutional system. So it's all not. whites the same? In my eyes, yes. Okay. Exactly the same. Fair enough. You agree with that? All whites are the same? I think in terms of the project that we're trying to do, yes. Because what we're trying to do so is change really a structurally yeah. white system, one that enhances white privilege, one that enhances white supremacy. Um, and I think we saw it right, uh, very recently with the white waitress who, who didn't get a tip. And the fact that a large amount of money, like something like 50,000 Rand was raised in her honor, is the epitome of white privilege and white supremacy. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about that, I have to agree with Catherine to say yes. And we have to make that acknowledgement because if we want to really challenge and defeat the system, um, it's not going to assist us to try and divide and, and, and so conquer. So could I just ask you, so the idea that the Constitution promotes of some sort of non-racial society is foundationally incorrect? I think that the constitutional promise and this is a difficult thing for me to say as a law student because one of the first things you're taught as a law student is that the constitution is supreme. It's a beautiful piece of documentation. I don't want you to necessarily be but, a constitutional fundamentalist. But, but I don't, yeah, I'm just asking you whether some sense of vision of the constitution promoting some form of non-racial society, not now, maybe not ever, but potentially. Definitely not now. The issue has been very much that the Constitution only appears to be invoked when it's white fragility and white tears and, and sort of white supremacy that's being challenged. And who's, who, who's protecting the constitutional promise of a poor black mother in the Eastern Cape with Can nothing? Can I ask you this? Why do you presume that I can't understand any of that? Because of privilege, because what, of you opportunity. Mean, because and the fact that I mean, if levels why, of would, as, why well. as a human being, Cannot I understand suffering that people had or have on a daily basis throughout this country when I encounter it? As a human being, I'm curious. I don't think it's that simple. Why? Actually, One can only that understand Why? that you kind of suffering. You don't think it's suffering. possible? I, I don't so think we're not really possible. human? Um, well, put it this way, mm -hmm. right. So None of us are. For me, put it this way. You, you went through a period of 300 years of enslaving mm. my forefathers. Well, I and then didn't you went do through that. Another I mean, whether you say I did. Hold on a second. So you went yeah. through another period of like apartheid, right, mm -hmm. where you continued to watch us suffer. You continued to... Well, you see, you that's, know, that's where you're jumping the gun. The question is, when you say watch us suffer, for you, all white people are the same, no matter what they did or didn't do. Yes. Okay. No, sir, that's, clear. That's a very, no, no, I understand where you're coming from. I'm not here to 
I'm just trying to understand where you're coming from so that my viewers can understand that, that's all. I don't think that a white person can claim to understand the struggles and the difficulties of black people. And we're becoming very problematic and, and it's going to become very dangerous mm -hmm. to try and make that assumption. Mm -hmm. okay. Because until you've experienced that kind of difficulty and that kind of struggle, you'll never truly understand What it. about black people who've been born into privileged environments over the last 20 odd years? They are the exception, not the rule. And as they continue to exist, many of them are students of mine. Yes, look, I mean, there's, there's no way one could factually deny that. That definitely exists. Okay. But it's probably also because of the manner in which the economy is now I, set up I, as well. Well, that's true. I, <laughs> so here's the point. I mean, how do you respond as a white person to what your two colleagues have said? Well, you just said that basically you condemn all whiteness and that all white people are the same. So isn't that racist in itself? If I'm sitting here saying that all black people are the same and that I condemn blackness, that would be racist. Do you it's, it's really believe same. that black people can be racist? Yes. And black do, people do you can understand be what the principles and fundamentals of what racism means? Do you know what yes. racism means? Do you know what racism I, means? I live it every day. Sitting across no, the table from you and the director at the moment so is racist so to me one as a black set of rules count for white people and another set of rules count for black people because if i say something that is dehumanizing towards a black people uh, a black person that would be racist but if a black person says the same thing to me then it's not racism racism is inherently linked to a power dynamic so there's an idea that racism for some reasons oh you're a black person i'm going to say something discriminatory towards black oh that's racism one can't really boil it down to that. Okay. Racism is very much about power dynamics. It's very much being in a position of superiority over another person. But isn't which the truth of the matter has been the white population of this country and not just of this country, very much of the world, of the Western world. So don't you think there's any double standards? Double standards how? When we, from the day we're born, we are taught to speak like you, dress like you, learn the things you learn. I know your history. I don't even know my own. During Let's even go as far back as like something like World War I, when, well, when white people were fighting during World War I. Black people were nowhere to be found, but I still don't know what we were doing during World War I. I know all about your history and your people. I have to celebrate Jan van Riebeck for discovering um, you know, the Cape and so forth, where we seem as if we didn't exist. So from the day that I am born, it's all about you. So how do you then say that I hold the power where you hold the power because all I know is you? doesn't make sense. I'm lost. Hence the need for decolonization, not just of higher education. What I'm interested in is one point that was made. It does seem to me that we are living through a system of appalling education for the vast majority yes. of black people. It's disgraceful. It's a crime against humanity that people are being brought up utterly and completely in a way which is not going to allow them to frankly get the way where the two of you are. Whether you like it or not, that's truth and we know that what do you say about that i mean it's scandalous now where's the anger about that well that's Pr how i find anger about that why can't you that's the anger that that created fees must fall that's the anger that well, created where is it going Rose out there and saying that's we cannot allow small children children with innate potential to have their potential destroyed because they have an education system utterly and completely skewed against them. Look, I do believe that change needs to happen from the ground. It needs to happen from preschool level. It needs to happen in the home. It needs to, you know, when we talk decolonization, people seem to think that we're only talking about institutions. No, no, that's what I'm asking it you. It starts from the beginning. It starts from the fact that basic education cannot be taken away from higher education. So where, where is, uh, I'm curious, where is all surely we've got to focus attention not all i accept the politics that, that the two of you have articulated is is, is vital it's got, and, and that's another matter but i'm talking about it seems to me we perpetuating the system as we speak because of the fact that the vast majority of our population are being subjected to the most appalling education <laughs> for me more and i'm just anything. interested why you not why is there no anger about that there is anger about that. Well, There's anger about every. I mean, for you to have not have heard of it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So no, I'm just asking. I'm talking tonight. I'm asking you. I understand that this anger towards me. I perfectly understand that. I will have to bear that. That's my cross, as it were. But I am much more interested in the extent to which what we're going to do in the future. And I'm asking, if we don't fix that, 
we'll be here in 50 years time debating the same issues yet again. So basically we need to decol as as you know, Fasi had mentioned, we need to decolonize. Well, how do we decolonize the, 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 the education at, at, at primary and secondary level? Well, we change the reading material, right? We change everything that they, they learn about. We, we change the history. We change... I think that's the only problem with the education no, system. No, right? it's deeper than that. But Thank we need you. to be able to begin somewhere. We I need agree. to start somewhere. I agree. We need to be able to tell the black nation and to tell black people that they existed outside and do exist outside of whiteness, right? And that's where we need to begin. And we begin with small things, right? Because this obviously inevitably needs to be a build-up. It can't be done overnight, unfortunately, but it must be done nonetheless. And also it's about resources in addition to that. It's yes. about, and it's not just throwing money at the problem. I, seem, I think we there's been a huge issue. Money, exactly. GDP, you know that. Well. Exactly. Yes, on education. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is that that money is not filtering down to where it should be, and there's a lot of inefficiency and there's a lot of corruption in the system. And that's where we, we need to be focusing our energies. But I think that we also need to be strategic in, in, in the manner in which we do this. There. One can't try to attempt to decolonize the whole country all at once. One starts at the space in which they're in, and right now we are university students, we're in higher education. Mm -hmm. Let us start here, because then we're going to be able, after this, to move into different positions well, that's the of policy I agree, and, and that's the that. debate I suppose we're going to have to have as to how we actually change the society radically. We've, this has been a very frank conversation, and it's important that we have this. I mean, we, if we don't have these conversations, we're going to go nowhere. And I respect uh, the fact that this particular conversation uh, has, has dealt with both painful and important questions. The really point is this. In 1976, in the heart of racist South Africa, black students at the, uh, basically subjected to guns and the army of, of the apartheid regime stood up and said no more. We started to see something similar happen. And the real question we've now to have to ask is in the year 2016, how do we construct a society that in fact totally reconfigures the history that we inherited over 300 years? You've heard quite a lot about that this evening. And as far as I'm concerned, you can judge for yourself. Goodbye.